And, you know, it was, it was a period of my life where I had to get myself in check. Um, and so when I look back on it, and, and this is going to be hard for me to explain this to you, but when I look back on it, it was one of the best things that could have happened at that point in my life. I was driving off a cliff and I didn't realize it physically and mentally. And if that didn't happen at that moment, I think I would have drove off a cliff. It allowed me to take a pause, both men mentally and physically. It allowed me to take a pause and look at my life at that point and say, what's, what's important? What's priority? Um, and you know, family was the priority and always was. And I think that next week, I spent a whole week with my family finding myself again and realizing that I needed to slow my pace down. I needed to refocus. I need it to, uh, to let my negative energy out better. I, I need it to control my feelings better. But it also made me realize that um, I love the tournament fish. I love to fish. When I, when I stopped and analyzed all of it and I said, God, I just, I, I gotta get back to my roots. It was, Mike, get back to the fishing. It's, it's, you know, who I am. At my core, it's fishing. And that year, in 2006, I decided to refocus on my fishing and stop running as hard. And I remember, you know, saying to myself, I can't say yes to everything. I gotta slow down. I gotta reprioritize my life and I gotta refocus on the fishing. Yeah. All right, and Mike Iaconelli using the drop shot in combination with a tube right now. Now, T Naughty, this is when things get fun when you're smallmouth fishing. This is the joy of smallie fishing. The entire school, 30, 40, 50 bass come up schooling, okay? You just start throwing now. Here's the problem he has. When, when you're throwing a drop shot, you need to retie every single fish you catch, okay? He doesn't have time to do that. They're busting every, he's gonna start firing a tube. Now the only problem you have with the tube, the smaller ones are getting it. You're not getting through the school of fish. You're catching 13, 14, 15 inch bass. He needs to get through that school. He's hoping to get back to the drop shot at some point. Mike Iaconelli, of course, the 2003 Sitgo Bassmaster Classic Jam. You remember him in that classic, doing a switch off with rod to rod, throwing something different at it. He's the master of doing that. He's a master of that, but he's really the master of this. This kid has grown up on these northern lakes. He knows exactly how to catch them, the weapons you need to catch them. But the biggest thing, he needs to get back through that school. He needs to get down to the bottom, and he's not doing that. He's really only gaining ounces right now. Even though he looks like he's catching a ton, he's not getting a ton of weight. Again, Mike Iaconelli is out there with just yards away from Ken Cook. Both these guys work in this spot, which contains apparently millions of smallmouth bass here. That's the beauty of it. But the, the biggest key, though, is the perch they're feeding. Guy. If you look at the color of that tube, it mimics those perch to a T. It's almost like trout fishing matching the hatch. There he goes, retying now that drop shot. He's been needing to do that for the past 10 minutes. The action's just been oh, so hot so and look. heavy. So he ties his shoe, and we get back, and maybe, yes, okay. There you go. I love the hat. You know, the, the hat is what's on fire right now. Oh, it's it, giant, it, maybe he has a cold or something this week. I finally tried retying that drop shot three times, and every time I would re go to retie it, one would break, and I would pick up my tube and cast to it. It's and when I look back at 2006 from a competitive standpoint, I had never in my life fished that good. That year, it was 11 tournaments. The elite season 
was 11 tournaments long from February all the way through September, the fall. It was the most grueling elite season on record ever. We've never had 11 tournaments over that amount of time from the winter pattern to pre-spawn to spawn to post-spawn to summer to early fall to late fall. It was the most grueling schedule, but I was the most focused I'd ever been. I won one on Lake Gunnersville. Mike Iaconelli was the guy in charge to start the day, but he's faded. Alton Jones and Gerald Swindle have jumped ahead of him on the board. This is the time of day where Mike has got to be fighting with his own mindset. Every day of the tournament, Sanders, he's been calling by about 8 o'clock. So far, one fish in the boat. It's all decisions right now. That gives you confidence. When you got five in the box, you slow down, you know? You've got one, you're fishing fast, you're nervous. Your mindset's not right. This Lake Gunnersville has gotten inside Mike Iaconelli's head, and it's done that before. Twice on this lake in years past, he's had the lead in this tournament and squandered it on the last day. Well, you know what? Last year, he even struggled to put a win in the bank. But the one thing about Mike Iaconelli, he does know how Big to one. win. You Big might one. not tell right here, Sanders, but I really respect what he's doing. He's going for the win instead of running to the bank in a panic and just fishing for numbers. He's trying to catch better than average size bass right now. In no way has he had a bad season at all. He's finished just outside of the Elite 12 in just about every one of these events so far this year. This time he's cracked through. Yeah! 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 That spring, I had a series of top fives. I was consistently catching them and when it came down to the last tournament on a Table Rock Lake in September of 2006, I was the angler of the year that year. 23 places higher than Ike, two pounds, two ounces, and that makes Michael Iaconelli the 2006 Sitco Bassmaster Elite Series Angler of the Year. What, what an incredible feeling and what an awesome year. Again, you know, I, I get to fish for a living. I mean, that's just amazing in itself. And, and to be able to come out here and fish, you know, with my heroes and my friends, that's awesome. Uh, it, it just couldn't, couldn't have played out better for me this year. You know, it was a rough start for me and I, I, I worked and I worked and I kept focused and I, I battled through some tough events. And it, it's, a, it's amazing, I'm speechless. Yeah, baby. How do you like me now? Mike Iaconelli captures the title. The 2006 Sitco Bassmaster Elite Series Angler of the Year. Mike Iaconelli had a rough classic to start his year out. After that, he vowed he was going after it hard. The Sitco Angler of the Year title, and he brings it home. And the 125,000, he is your Angler of the Year. Now we um, it was amazing. Uh, when I look back on it, had I not had that incident happen at the 2006 Classic, had I not had that pause and that moment to refocus, I'm telling you, I wouldn't have won Angler of the Year. Um, it was the best I had ever fished because I think it was the most I was ever focused directly on fishing. And that was a big one for me. You know, the other big things that happened in 2006, it was, it was a special year was it was also a year that I traveled with my Uncle Don full time. And to get to have the guy, my father figure, the guy that taught me how to fish, supported me from day one, to have him there at every event that year, all the way up to Angler of the Year, it was incredible. I can remember the last day of Table Rock, uh, the third day when I knew, the moment I knew that I had won the points that year. And before I even accepted my trophy, the moment I knew I had won points, I remember walking down in my boat where my uncle was waiting for me after I had weighed my fish. And I remember we both just looked at each other and we, we teared up. I, it's hard, I'm gonna tell you, it's hard to get me to to cry. It's hard to get me to be emotional. I've only, I don't know, I've cried 
30 times in my life, but that was one of them. And we just looked at each other and we just welled up in tears because I think starting the year with the lowest low you could have with that incident at the Classic. It, you know, lo looking back on it, I mean, obviously, you know, the first thing that comes to my mind when it's brought up is, is regret. It, it was just a real unfortunate, you know, the first day, first thing in the morning, you know, you catch a couple good fish, you start getting some momentum going, you've got a limit, and you look back and, and something devastating happens. Oh no! What the? You gotta imagine, here's your dreams being shattered. You've got this five fish limit, it's still early, you open up that live well, and there they go. They're all belly up, floating dead. Oh no! I'm an angler, I don't want to kill these fish. This is devastating. This never happened to me before in a classic. Never. And I, I just, I handled it the wrong way. To end the year with this trophy that's called Angler of the Year, and it's a big one, it's an important one, it's a childhood dream, to have him there was incredible. Um, that was a special moment. But here's the other thing that happened in 2006 that was life-changing. And you know, when I look back on it and you say, ah, oh, man, are, are things meant to be? Things happen for a certain reason. You, you can put it on the religious terms or you could put it on the opposite term, whatever, where, however you want to look at it. I do believe that a little bit. I believe that things happen when they're supposed to happen. And you know, when I look back on 2006, I was refocused, I was reprioritized, family was important, I was, I was not saying yes to everything. And in my personal life, with my relationships, I was refocused. And in, at ICAST of 2006, that year uh, it was in Las Vegas. Um, up to up in that time range, a lot of the ICASTs were held in Las Vegas. I was at Las Vegas at ICAST that year, working for my sponsors, and I remember that the first night of ICAST, I was with my my friends in the fishing industry, Ish Monroe. I was with Byron Velvic. I was with uh, uh, Boom Boom Freddy, Fred Romanis, and I remember the first day. Byron said, hey, I have a friend that works for Red Bull and he's got a, a private after party for the beverage industry that he wants us to go to. Would, would you be interested in going? I was like, yeah, absolutely. I'll go hang out, you know? And I remember going to this after party and Byron at the time, and Byron Velvic, for those of you watching this don't know, Byron was The Bachelor. Byron The Bachelor. He was on the TV show The Bachelor. And at the time he was with Mary, who was the girl he picked on The Bachelor. So I remember going to this after party with Byron and Mary, and Byron and Mary drew a lot of attention everywhere they went because he was The Bachelor and she was The Bachelorette, right? They were the couple. And I remember um, Mary, his fiance, introducing me to a, a group of uh, a girls that were hanging around. and. I kind of like saw this girl and started talking to her and like really hit it off with this girl. And her name was Becky. And you know, it was one of those ones where, you know, you meet somebody and you connect with them and you know, you don't know at that point, right? And so we hung out that night, it was awesome. I ended up meeting her another night. Uh, ICAST was three nights, so I met her another night out for some drinks and had a great night with her again. We exchanged numbers and we left and that was that. Well, the very next tournament after ICAST that year, 2006, was the Potomac River, which was in Washington, D.C. And this girl, Becky, that I had met lived in Washington, D.C. So I got a chance to see her again at that tournament. And you know, one thing led to another and to make a long story short, 2006 is when I met Becky. So, you know, when I look back on a year that really changed my life with something that happened that was so negative, but grounding, uh, 2006 was the year. 
you know, winning Angler of the Year, getting to travel with my uncle, and getting to meet my wife um, in 2006, it was a life changer for me. Heard you had a bad day, so what? it ain't going your way, so yeah, what? never give up, heard my life was a movie, okay. I got people trying to use me, no I will never give up, it's not about where you at, it's about where you headed, and all the things they say about you only hurt if you let it, I gotta put on for the kids cause they getting the message, I'm on my knees thinking Look at all of my blessings Look at little old me doing real big things From a real small town, I'ma make them all proud And these kids need a leader, I'ma show them all how Anybody in my way, then we gon' mow them all down hey, From the garden state, I got some deep roots Fisherman drip with some new boots I almost didn't make it, that's the real truth They call me the general, I got real juice Pull up in a bass cat doing donuts When I'm at the classic, the people go nuts Heard you had a bad day it ain't going your way, yeah Never give up Heard my life was a movie I got people trying to use me I will never give up You know, starting with uh, 2007, right? It's, it's a new year, uh, but the sport's about to change again. And in 2007, um, ESPN decided they were going to part ways with bass. Um, you know, they decided they sort of had their fill of it. Um, you know, I don't know the exact reasons. I think, I think in their mind, they were trying to grow fishing and, and the BASS circuit to be something as big as NASCAR or golf. And I don't think it reached the potential in the period of time they wanted it to. On yourself, on your faith, on your dreams, on your mind, on your health, yeah. You gotta work, never tell, keep your head down, find what you love and excel, yeah. Push and pull and repel any hate, go create what you want, feel compelled, yeah. And once you finally get a taste of the race, you'll never look back once you felt that. Don't let somebody take your time and your worth, just focus on yourself. But 